Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for the 4th of July 2020. Happy 4th to you. Hope you're staying safe out there, keeping cool. It's really hot here in Wilmington, North Carolina, where I am located. And um, I like it. That's good. All right, well, let's get on to the tropics, shall we? Uh, I said that things were probably going to stay quiet and right on cue, they don't. <laughs> but at least we don't have to worry about any hurricanes no major impacts from anything that still holds true we do have tropical depression number five born out of this little area of energy that's been kind of stretched across the western atlantic i'll show you that in a moment we can see that very readily apparent in the vorticity signature data we'll get to that in just a moment as i said uh, currently the depression located between cape hatteras which is here and bermuda which is there and pressure is 1,009 millibars, moving to the east-northeast at about 17 miles per hour. The forecast for it is to move just to the north of Bermuda, maybe becomes a tropical storm. If so, the name will be Edward, and it'll be the earliest fifth name storm since 1851, I guess, since records have been kept, whatever. But do not let that fool you necessarily into thinking oh more 2020 you know of course here we go these storms that are forming off the coast here of north america are not related at all to the meat of the hurricane season that is coming next month and beyond maybe even this month as i'll show you potentially uh, in other words the strong tropical waves that we get that roll off of africa these systems like TD5, like Dolly, like Arthur, right, Bertha, those are um, mid-latitude impulses of energy that come off the continent of North America and become tropical or subtropical in nature. It's still a symptom that the atmosphere and the ocean are primed, but we're not introducing these large tropical waves into the equation just yet. So... It may be just a little bit of a correlation, but not a lot, put it that way. Don't, don't worry too much about this uh, as a sign that, oh my gosh, it's going to be horrible. This doesn't necessarily have anything to do with that, all right? The horribleness will come later, so to speak, when the tropical waves get really uh, vigorous off of Africa. And it's true. I mean, we could have a very, very active season. And yes, for some people, it could be horrible, but we're not there yet, so don't worry too much about this. Um, the satellite imagery tells the tale here. You can see this pretty clearly here. Uh, lots of energy kind of stretched out here over thousands of miles as this trough and trailing front has kind of stalled out here. Notice too the very large amount of and prevalent amount of convection right here, right here, right here. Lots of convection over here, even a tropical wave with some active convection heading into the northeast part of South America. So a lot more in the way of upward motion and rising motion in the atmosphere or what we call convection. And here is our tropical depression over here. There's Bermuda and um, we'll look at a close-up of that in just a moment. As we slide to the east just a little bit, by the way, these satellite animations, these two that I just showed you, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits, and even off the coast of Africa, some convection here, a little bit more in the way of moisture out in the main development region, dry Saharan air layer influence coming off to the north, which you would expect. Uh, tropical wave maybe getting sheared pretty bad over here. But again, look at all these areas of thunderstorms, lots of them, and it's only very early July. I tell you, as the month goes on, I do believe that we will see something try to get its act together somewhere in this region through here uh, as I talked about in the video discussion from a couple of days ago. All right, so let's zoom in. Oh, hold on. I wanted to show you the vorticity. And this is cool. So here it is from the cloud cover perspective. And again, here's the string of convection, little blobs of thunderstorms here and there. And then you can go and kind of look underneath those clouds and see how much energy there is or vorticity is one way to look at it. Spin in the atmosphere. There's the depression right there. Here's some energy here. Lots of energy spread out over a large area. Uh, a couple of concentrations here, here, and here. And so 
it's not surprising considering the overall favorability of this part of the Atlantic through here that occasionally these little vort maxes, these little blobs of energy, do get their act together and develop into a small, cohesive name storm. You know, it's, it's not surprising. And no, they are not wastes of a name. Some people argue about that, and it's irritating because, I mean, the National Hurricane Center forecasts for more than just coastal interests. You know, believe it or not, there are shipping interests between Bermuda, which is here, and the east coast of the United States, or elsewhere in the northern hemisphere. And look, there's the system right there. There's the depression. That's a large weather system. And if you're uh, caught unaware, you don't know that it's there, it can create a lot of problems for you, capsize your boat. And when we can just look at the satellite imagery, you can see as well as I can, uh, a defined circulation in here, a little bit of thunderstorm activity. It's not very well organized. And in fact, you've got that, look at that outflow boundary right there. Wow, that's incredible. That'd be really cool if you saw that. If you're sitting out in a boat and you saw that thing racing out. And that's a sign that it's not very well organized. Some dry air helping to collapse those thunderstorms and send that little boundary out. And as for Bermuda, you're going to get some rain. There's some thunderstorms headed your way now. Uh, and so this will fill up the tanks. We call that tank rain. I've learned about that from a couple of our supporters and friends over in Bermuda. I've been to Bermuda a couple times myself for storms. Uh, and, you know, I mean, you need the fresh water uh, as long as you don't get too much of it at, at one time. But nevertheless, there it is. TD5 probably going to become a name storm at some point if it can become a little bit better organized than what you see here. Uh, but again, I think it's really neat to see and important to point out, all these little pieces of energy kind of lined up along the grapevine. These are your ripe grapes or your tomatoes or whatever. Whatever. It doesn't matter. There you go. Uh, and then down in the deep tropics, a little bit more energy starting to show up. Very low on the vorticity scale, as it were. Um, but that's coming. And then in the uh, eastern Pacific, here's a candidate for development. But once again... No worries for the Pacific coast of Mexico. Still looking nice for that area. All right, uh, so we looked at this. Now let's look at that. Uh, the water temperatures, just in case you were wondering. So Bermuda is located roughly in this area right through here. And the water temperatures, this is the 26 Celsius, the yellow. That's 26 Celsius. So that's about 79 and a half Fahrenheit. This color in here, whatever you call that, between green and yellow is 25 Celsius. So water temperatures are not particularly warm as, uh, as this system scoots off to the north and east. And in fact, they get a little cooler here, uh, 24 degrees Celsius inside that green. And so sea surface temperatures will be decreasing. Uh, so this doesn't have a very big window of opportunity to develop for what it's worth. And also, Right up against the coast of the Carolinas now, all of a sudden, water temperatures are 27 Celsius, about 81 at the beach, 80, 81 Fahrenheit, 28 Celsius not far offshore, a nice stripe of 29 Celsius, even way up here at this far north, 29 degrees Celsius at about almost 38 degrees north latitude. Very warm in the western Atlantic. All right, so what does uh, the next five to seven days hold? Well, here's the Atlantic Basin west coast of Africa here, North America over on the left side. You get the idea. Hopefully you know your geography. Now we're looking for these little blobs right here. That's the depression represented in the vorticity field at 850 millibars up in the air. That's about 5,000 feet. So let's watch this system and you know elsewhere across this area through here. And then let's see do we get anything that tries to develop out in this area over the next five days or so? All right, so there we go. We're 24 hours out, and uh, the depression really doesn't do much. Some tropical wave energy coming off Africa. You can see these little pouches, if you will. Right there's one. But again, the air still kind of stable out that way. Not very favorable in terms of moisture. The Saharan air layer doing its thing uh, 96 hours out. Still nothing in the deep tropics. Definitely these impulses, though. You can see a tropical wave there. Uh, another one through here. Maybe a weak one right in here. Hard to say, but 
They're out there, but being that it's early July, they typically do not develop. Going on out to day five, day six, day seven. All right, so really kind of a quiet pattern overall with no hurricanes seen. And since most people focus on hurricanes, is it going to be a hurricane? If it's not, I don't care. That's how a lot of people look at it. Well, people do care about other events, depressions and storms. And while we don't see any of those develop over the next week, I would suspect that we might see something with some of these pieces of vorticity. Just one more time referring back to this graphic here. Wouldn't surprise me if one of these pieces here uh, kind of singles itself out and does like this depression and becomes a short-lived maybe a candidate if this becomes Edward one of these would be Fay. but nothing to worry about in terms of major widespread impacts that still holds we're looking good as far as that goes uh, and owed to that or owing to that idea if that's how you say it Eric Webb tweeting uh, that the 0z ECMWF the operational and the ensemble prediction system are still supporting the idea for a few more areas of interest over the next week that emerge from convection associated with an upper low over the Gulf Coast. So this is what some of the ensemble members are showing. And a few little hints way out here in the deep tropics. But nothing solid just yet. This is just kind of noise, if you will, picked up by the ensemble guidance. Here's the operational from last night. Again, valid out at about a week, right off the coast of the Carolinas, perhaps. And, you know, this is typical, okay? The atmosphere and the ocean primed, wanting to develop something. So if you drop these pieces of energy down here, they just might develop. But so far, nothing to worry about as of yet. So I wanted to share this with you real quick. I like it when people share things with me. And uh, Brad here, he's uh, from the Tampa area, I believe. Um, sent me these pictures. Do you know what this is from? Yes, this is from the famous telephone pole at Mexico Beach. He took these, I guess, today and sent these to me today, tagged me on Twitter. That is where we had the GoPro and the live cam set up, but more importantly, the GoPro cam set up to capture Hurricane Michael back in 2018. Uh, the, the telephone pole is still there. This is Mexico Beach, Florida. Uh, that Brad Brad sending me these pictures from and uh, we can move through uh, there's another shot of it and yet another this is the gas station that was there and a close-up of the gorilla tape holding on strong now still there that's the bracket the GoPro actually the box would sit right here and kind of put a little thing on it that's the camera if you will and it looked out in this direction and just to remind you what did it see that's what it saw. That's the view from that pole. This is yeah, about a little after 10.30 in the morning or so on October 10th. And we move through. You remember what happened. Yep. And there was the aftermath. So that's what it looked like in the hours, minutes after Michael passed. This is what it looks like today. That's incredible. I really, really appreciate Brad. Uh, I mean, this is to me like a historic marker, and it means a lot that people are thinking of uh, our projects in a way. You know, it gets your attention. It really does. It helps you remember, oh, yeah, you know, we can get some really bad hurricanes in the United States, and we got to do our part to educate ourselves and to do what we can to mitigate property damage. And, you know, the most important thing is to keep you alive. Because without you on the other side of the camera there, watching from your device of choice, there's no reason for me to be here. Right? So thanks, Brad. I appreciate that. Hey, look, seriously, you guys, stay safe out there. A lot of areas are not doing fireworks for you know municipalities. They're not doing them here in Wilmington, not doing them in Southport. Uh, Raleigh, I think, you know, there's a lot of examples. So a lot of people are going to be doing them... Um, amateur style and so please be careful I bought some at the store today the ones that are acceptable in North Carolina and we're gonna go out to the beach we're gonna clean up after ourselves when we're done and I know I sound like you know old dad talking blah 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 but really come on you know gotta stay safe be sensible watch out for the pets that may be upset by these things 
because when the hurricanes get going, if you're not around to enjoy it, you lost your hearing, you lost your eyesight, or you lost your life, or your fingers, you can't see the videos that I do. That won't work, will it? No, it won't. So please be safe out there. But at the same time, enjoy our Independence Day and uh, all that goes with that. All right? So we'll keep an eye on things. I'll be back tomorrow with another update, and uh, we'll go from there. Sound like a plan? Very good. As always, thank you for tuning in. I do appreciate it very, very much. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.